In this video, you're going to learn how to ask questions to a code base using LinkChain. Let's go. So first things first, to set up this environment, you're going to need to install the um, a few packages that you know are just common when you're using LinkChain. So in this case, LinkChain, DeepLake, OpenAI, and TikToken. So then for our imports, we're going to import OS, we're going to import GetPass, which actually we're not going to be using because we're going to do the authentication with the APIs just by setting the environment variables. We're going to then import OpenAI embeddings to do our embeddings of the code base that we're going to be loading. We're going to do the vectorization using DeepLake, which is the approach they used in the documentation. Then you're going to set up your active loop token uh, API key, which you can do by just going to the DeepLake website, uh, setting up an account and acquiring your API key. Here, you could also set up your OpenAI API key. I already have mine as an environment variable in my system. And then we're going to load the embeddings for uh, using the OpenAI embeddings uh, class. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to clone the repository that we're interested in. In this case, I'm cloning a repository called Motion Canvas, which is a TypeScript framework to generate animations through code. And I'm really interested in this framework because I'm learning how to code animations. So I, but there's like a lot of things in this specific repo that are a bit confusing and a bit complicated. So even if you follow their actual tutorial. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to see if Ching maybe can help me through this question answering setup. Okay. So following, uh, moving on, we're going to be loading all the files inside the repo. We're going to be using the text loader to do the loading of the text documents, which will be the files in the code base. We're going to set up the root directory as the directory that contains the um, code that we cloned. Then we're going to set up an empty list for storing the docs that we're going to load from the code base. Then we're going to loop through that code base and for each of the files we're going to try to load it with the text loader and then um, append that add that to our uh, docs list which will be a list with a bunch of document objects that will be the result of loading each file with this text loader then if that doesn't work we're going to set up an exception and we're going to move on all right perfect so now after that what we're going to be doing is here i'm just um making sure that the docs list is actually filled with documents so i'm just printing the length of that list in this case i have 1321 files that were loaded and if i came here and i did something like okay so print length of docs but then i showed you guys what docs is it's just going to be a list full of document objects that contains the files and the content of the files from the code base Okay, so then we're going to chunk those files and we're going to do that using the character text splitter from LangChain. And that's as easy as just calling character text splitter. We're going to set up some chunk size and some chunk overlap. It's important to note that for this example, I didn't tune none of these parameters, but you can do that yourself if you think that it's not working for your particular use case. Then we're going to uh, split the documents from the docs and save that to a variable called texts. So then here it was creating all the chunks with different sizes from all those documents from the list. And then once we've done that, now it's the vectorization bit. So now we're going to set up, um, we're going to create a public data set. Although right now I'm not 100% sure it's public just because I'm not setting public here because I think that they removed this parameter from a later uh, release of the plague. I don't know. However, we're just going to be setting up the plague and then we're going to set up the data set and the data set is going to be based on this, um, the code base that we're trying to, that, we're, that we embedded and that we indexed. And then we're going to add all the documents that we just chunked here. And that is pretty much it. That's pretty much we get what we got to do to do the vectorization part. So then it's going to be doing all the indexing. And once we are done, we can then access it. So now I'm accessing that database. And 
Now here I'm accessing the database. And once we've accessed the database, it's gonna print something like the data set can be visualized in Jupyter Notebook, etc. Uh, this data set was loaded successfully. It is saved in whatever place, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's gonna give some meta information about the data set, like the size of the embedding and stuff like that. And now we can set up our retriever, which is gonna be the thing that's gonna allow us to ask questions to the code base. Yeah. So for the retriever, we can set up some search keyword arguments like the distance metric, which in this case, if I'm not mistaken, this is cosine similarity. And then the number of things that it fetches, if I'm not mistaken, there's 100 uh, and maximal marginal relevance to be 100% honest. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, but okay, so this is, I think this pretty much that this will return the top 10K uh, answers. And then from those, it will give the, the best one. I think it's something like that. Not 100% sure. Okay, but we set up these search keyword arguments for the retriever. And then we can now just set up the chat with OpenAI so that we can ask the questions and then just uh, get the responses. So we're going to load chat OpenAI, chat OpenAI from the linkchain.chat models. And we're going to load the conversational retrieval chain from linkchain.chains. So we set up our model. In this case, I'm loading directly GPT-4. You could load GPT-3.5 Turbo like ChatGPT. It's up to you and you see what works best for your case. And then we're gonna set up the conversational retrieval chain, and then we're gonna call the from LLM method, and we're gonna feed that model that we just loaded here, and the retriever that we just set up in the previous cell right here. So now with this, we have all we need to start querying, uh, to start querying the code base. So I'm gonna set up a list with all the questions that I have for the code base. In this case, I just asked two simple questions like how to create an animation of a moving square in mo motion canvas and what are the core components to create an animation in motion canvas. Uh, and when I, and once I've set up these questions, I can now set up an empty list that will store the chat history between me and the code base throughout this conversation. And then for each question in my questions list, I'm going to uh, uh, query the database. I'm going to query that retriever chain. And then I'm going to append the question and the answer to my chat history and print the, uh, print the question and print the answer. So it's as simple as that. And now we can, I can run this and get the response. So, oh, sometimes it takes a little bit to load, to, I'm sorry, to, to run. So I'm gonna do a magic trick. Ta -da. All right, guys, so it took a while, but here we have our answers. So it went as far as output the entire code that I need to do what I wanted to do in Motion Canvas for my first question. And then for the second question, it's it discusses the main components of the motion the motion canvas framework. So these are sets of elements displayed on the screen along with animations, etc. By combining these components, you can create complex and informative vector animations. All right, cool. So we can see that in a text editor. So this was the question: What are the components to create an animation? And then the answer: To create, you need the following a project configuration project. Yeah, that's all correct. Array of scenes, that's correct. Scenes, yeah, that's perfect. So it, it works. It's amazing. So I'm very satisfied with this answer. All right, guys, that's it. That's how you query a code base using LinkChain. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.